I'm Drew, my man. So oh, good we go to again? see you. Let's go again. Oh, so one more time, one more time. <laughs> there it is. So good to see you, man. Yeah, finally hey, London. You're in London. Yeah. What are you doing over here? Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks to you for having me. It's wonderful. We also got some good weather, which, uh, trust me, I was not expecting, mm -hmm, to be mm -hmm, honest. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here on, like, I'm a tourist, really a tourist. Yeah. I came for an event and then to yeah. see you and to, to go around and see the city and see some watches, of course. Oh, because man, it's that's, an that's what we do. Well, thank you for making some time for us. And the two watch collection, um, it's a real treat, boy, it's a real treat. Last time we saw each other, where were we? We were. I think we let this now. No, I we were, we were. People are going to think, God, what are these up, these guys up to now? What do they do for it? What, what the hell do they do for? Yeah, I asked we saw each other was, was, was Lake Como. <laughs> yeah, for a Langens on our event for the Concorso de Leganza. Did I say that right? Yeah, Is yeah, that correct. Concorso de Leganza. Concorso, Concorso de Leganza. There yes. we go. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. In Villa d'Este, in fact. Villa d'Este, of course. It was nice, huh? Tell us. It's pretty nice. Tell us, Andrea. Tell us, because some people might not be familiar with what you do. This is a question people ask me, and I, I never know what the answer yeah, is. Either. I don't have an answer, but same. you tell me what you do. I ask myself the same questions every morning, actually. I create content mm -hmm. for a living, mm -hmm. and I am a consultant for some brands to help them uh, doing social media, strategies, promotion, whatever. Uh, on the other hand, of course, I'm a watch guy. Like, I love watches. It all started with the first watch I, well, it actually all started with um, being in a private school and everyone wearing watches, but no one knowing anything about it apart from price points and, and, and price tags and so I was the kid not having these watches but uh, building the culture to tell the people what they were actually wearing then I met a guy that basically was in watchmaking and brought me to Basel World 2015 and so from there I was 14 years old 2015 hmm. in Basel World and I was like well I want to do this hmm. it actually sounds fun mm. and then since then it all started and went on so, as it is today. So even even at school in Italy, watches were yep. a thing. Like kids yeah. wore watches; course, they were into them. Of course. What brands? What are we talking about? Well, what, they were what, not what, really what into you? them. They were not really into them. It was just that for us, it's the perfect gift when you uh, have like not get baptized because it's too early, but uh, <laughs> all the sacraments after you get either a pen or a watch. Mm -hmm. So basically, maybe you don't care about both objects, but still you actually own them and you give them a certain emotional value as well, which in the end uh, will always be there even if you don't grow the passion. Everyone was having a basic Rolex, to mm -hmm. be honest, mm -hmm. because we are the, Ro I think we really are the Rolex country. Like I was gonna say, I is there anything Rolex. other than Rolex that are gifted on those occasions? Well, yeah, uh, everything from the family, like her heritage, because everyone has a Longines, in Italy, really? everyone has a Longines in, in, at home, somewhere in a drawer, somewhere. And so Longines, a Bon Mercier, very many, mm. uh, and Rolexes. But the thing is, if they were vintage, Longines or Bon Mercier, if they were mm. new, Rolex. Because I think the Italian market was responsible for the popularity of, of Rolex, but also for AP, the Royal Oak. They were they, they were the early adopters yeah. of that design. Yeah. I think anything with a bit of design, you sort of, you guys are the ones that, that lead the, the charge with confidence. I think also the French people, to be mm. honest. like if if, you, if we were mentioning before our friend on the rocks yes. and, and, and they, the, the whole Parisian scene is much it's more strong. about design. Mm. We were, but nowadays I think Italian collectors are either super great or super boring because mm. most people I meet, they just collect Rolex, mm. which is a brand I love, don't get me wrong, but it's pretty boring. I mean, it's always the same mm -hmm. and repeat and repeat and repeat. Mm. So if you have 20 modern Rolexes, to me, you're a super boring guy. Literally. I don't know what you think about Do it. Do you know what? I mean, look, I'm sure we'll get some comments. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get some yeah, comments. Yeah, I know, I know. About that. <laughs> I know. I was thinking about this, um, Andre. You know, I actually haven't put up um, a Rolex on my own channel. Really? Ever. Never? I might be the only guy ever to have not yeah. put up a single Rolex yeah, ever. Yeah, indeed. Which is interesting. Wow. Which is interesting. Wow. I, 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 admire the, um, I admire the brand. I admire the, 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 the product. It doesn't speak to me personally. You know, aesthetically or, or yeah, um, I, I, the same. I, I do have a, I've got a Tudor which I love, which has a Rolex crown and a Rolex case back. But to me, it's something very different. Um, Indeed. What were the brands that got you in in the first place? This this chap that took you over to Bosworth. Were there certain brands that that he instilled in you? What did you like? In the beginning, sell? I would say Omega because really? it was. It, it's also something easy 
for you to start with. I mean, mm. you can get a vintage for 200 euros mm. and, and still have fun with it. Mm. And I actually remember being in the Omega boutique because my first watch was an Omega from my, my grandparents. So I brought it to the boutique to get it serviced. They knew a lot of stuff about watches. And so they explained me the Speedmaster. And since then I was a Speedmaster guy for a period of time. But now it's all about like Cartier design and all stuff like this. I just want stuff that people have never seen before. Mm. But I think it's just what we do, you know? Mm. You see watches all day, every day, and you're like, I want to see something new, mm -hmm. which sometimes also is like an addiction, you know, like an obsession, <laughs> like what's Man, new? I can tell we're, we're, we're very similar because my first watch was an Omega as well, okay. but I got, and I love from the, the boutique. We've got an obsession for interesting, unusual things. I think mainly because sure. there's an opportunity to learn. It is. Dive into something and learn. We were talking about the soft watch, and I think you are recognized for shapes, for case shapes, sure. design. That soft watch we don't have here today. It's yeah, not part of the two watch collection, but in in many ways, those who are familiar with Andrew will will know, you know, the story of the soft watch. Give us a quick overview of some of your key watches over your time that you've picked up on that you love. So uh, it actually started every, everything started with this watch, which was a uh, vintage floral dial Omega with a tuna shaped case. That was the first one. So first one is first love is forever, mm -hmm. and. Uh, then it came an Omega Speedmaster, then it came my first, first Rolex today just, which was just a watch I really use very mm -hmm. much. I think it's the most versatile watch ever. Five years later, the only watch that truly spoke to me that much, I tank the Cartier. Mm -hmm. It's really one of the very few watches I look at and just be amazed every time, really. And it came at Anderson Genève, the Communication, a small one, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the um, World Timer. Then I guess this one, to mm -hmm. be honest, really, it's a watch. I, it's what my first independent watch, and really came to me in this, this, this. Uh, it was super, super random. Actually. Tell us about it, Joe. I think we can't, we can't detour from that. That's led us beautifully into this. So yeah. what have we got here? Yeah, yeah. I brought it also because it's gonna be published somewhere, you know. So it's. I thought it was also <laughs> nice thing to 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 have it. So basically, I saw this watch on uh, Manuel's wrist, the uh, the guy from Luerard, and uh, he actually was wearing it, but it was not presented yet or anything. Thing is the Louis Rad for Constantin Chaikin is a regulator mm -hmm. in uh, 39 millimeters, so with a with a purple um, out outer part of the dial, mm -hmm. real more mm -hmm. or less. Um, and basically, I saw the watch and I was like, "Yeah, it's mine!" Like literally, straight away, give me. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah. Like I have was to have it, it. Was it was it the funkiness of the subdials? Was it clearly? Um, Constantin, you could see his design yeah. and DNA on it. Yeah, and it's I I do think that I I'm not the guy who could pull out pull off a a, a, a Joker watch because mm. I I think it's mm. a bit too much. It's not mm. my style. It doesn't suit me that much. But this is it's a, it's a big watch. Yeah, yeah, it is a big this watch. Is, and this is very, very wearable. Bulky. This is very wearable and still screams Constantin Joker mm -hmm. really, but keeping it much more low key, you know, mm -hmm. like and no one understands anything about the watch. Everyone asks me. So how do I tell the time? Mm. And this also is a big opportunity to talk to a lot of people I meet at bars, uh, parties, whatever. Mm -hmm. Not watch people, which are my favorite actually, because mm. we know each other already. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's good. Yeah. We, we, we are our topics. <laughs> but there's nothing like when you see the, the the eyes light up. Exactly. And you get an opportunity exactly. to. It's funny, isn't it? You talk about influence. You talk about influences in the, in our generation. But actually, that's real influence. When you get the opportunity to see someone light up. And you know, in some ways, I, I, I see our, our roles and colleagues of ours as custodians of the industry to try and inspire people to get into watches. And when they suddenly they see um, that on your wrist, and they're like, "Well, what is that?" And you, you get to tell them all about it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the subdial's awesome. I, mean, I can see the, yeah. sub, the, the running seconds. And six. yeah, a lot of people get like a, a sad or frustrated by the fact that it doesn't show the seconds actually. Because, mm. but I don't really think you need to see the seconds on a watch. I actually don't like the seconds, but mm. it's it's a personal take anyhow. And yeah, I mean, this really is one up uh, with the soft watch. It's maybe the only two watches in my collection that really gets people that are not from the watchmaking industry or not interested in the watches just to like think about. Of the beauty of a watch because in the end even when I when I was a kid I didn't like watches I didn't want to tell the time mm -hmm. and I really was like this is hella boring mm -hmm. really boring mm -hmm. then as I think you did we discovered the fact that there's something interesting behind it and in it getting people that really like don't like watches to actually being interested in something is really what I like like it's my aim it's my purpose the the subdial here so we've got the running seconds at six yep and then we've got the hours, the hours at 12. yes it does look like the eye it looks like an eyeball it, it does it, it should do it, it looks, should do yeah it's got that that sort of 
lack of finish to it. It should be a monster, it. actually. Mm. It, it should looks... be a monster. It's the Time Eater, technically, so it's really like a monster. It's like a Polyphemus. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's like a giant somehow. And this beautiful finish on the doll, yeah. the wavy finish on the yep. doll is something else. Yep, it's very nice. It's a bit it's a bit thick, in my opinion, but still, come on, it's super nice. And the price point was so so fair. Mm -hmm. And I unboxed it in, Lon in, in London. No, I unboxed it in Geneva. <laughs> I got Let me just ask about the limitation. Yes. And then we'll go on to the next one. Of course. So, Andrew, this one's a limited edition, so 178. It is. It is. Is this model, um, this regulator style, is this um, is this available in the collection, the Louis Heron collection? Not with the Chai Kin Touch. Not with the Chai Kin Touch. But uh, regulator is their own thing, literally. They are not famous, but still as their signature, more mm -hmm. or less. So uh, they do regulators, and I think it's a nice twist. This, in many ways, and I think this is what we look for in watches, I think it's about looking for fun and yeah. looking for that lightheartedness. Yeah. That point I do of feel difference. the same. I do feel the same. We we must have it. Otherwise, you know, that's what we we're saying about Rolex. Mm. It's great. Mm. I think it's super versatile. It's 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 reliable. Mm -hmm. But once you have, let's say three, four, then you don't need. Once you've had one, you've pretty much got it ticked off. I mean, I would, I would say no. I would say three in the sense that I would have a day date. I would have a Submariner, and I would have a Daytona. But that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a GMT and not a Submariner, or a day just not a day date, you know? But mm -hmm. I think they're very interchangeable. Have that's... you still got yours? Your, the yeah, early yeah, one that you yeah, had? Yeah, 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 Which one? Was it Datejust? Was it yeah, Datejust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I it. still have, I, I think I still have all my watches, basically. I just buy more. So you don't you don't <laughs> sell? You're not someone who... Sometimes. Some, if I get a crazy offer for something, yes. Mm -hmm. Or if it's something I bought. Sometimes I just buy because the price is good and the product mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't really um, resonate with it. It's just something I like. I only buy what I like. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just buy it because I, yeah, like it, but price was super good, mm -hmm. so let's get it. So and then if you fall out of love with it or you, your, your taste evolves, you, you are prepared to let it go? Yeah, but I, trust me, I don't really let it go. I can say the number of watches I do have, but it's too much. Too it's many. really, yeah, really? We're, we're, we're like in the, in the, in the three digits words. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was going to ask if there was a limitation. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask, as a collector, if you've got a limitation to... Thing is, no, because every time I look at the whole full collection, there's very few watches I would part with because, in the end, some of them have meaning. I have some prototypes from from old companies from the Valet de Joux that were like used to showcase the case size and mm. stuff like this, which I never wear and I actually like, but maybe they're too small. I don't like to wear them. It's just maybe I paid fifty bucks and I when I look at it, I'm it's happy. It's worth a lot more than that to you, yeah. and it's worth a lot more than it would be to sell. So. Why should I let it go? Yeah. For 50 bucks? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. I keep it. <laughs> That's an addiction. That, but, but the approach to every, well, everyone's approach is so different. The psyche of the collector is fascinating. And I think the real kick in, the, the, the point that needs to be made is that it's not about spending a lot of money. No. You can do it for, for a, 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 a little, you know, a small investment, relatively small investment, a couple hundred, if not less. It just takes fun time. With it. Just yeah. takes time. And it's just fun to, to recognize that this can sometimes seem like it's all about spending big bucks but it really isn't and i think you're you're a good example of that yeah so. the first soft watch was 35 bucks there you now go. they're 3k so. there you go <laughs> yeah so Andrew, I, I love that i love that tell us about your okay. second one because well, i have to say when i saw this on your wrist i didn't know necessarily what it was i thought that i did but sometimes some watches just work with people that wear them this works with thank you. you this this really works with thank you. you so this is a vintage boucheron as you can see no buckle but mm -hmm. uh, i already showed you this it's 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 completely different approach to watch making in my opinion and this uh, represents a, 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 a topic and what is my collection which is no logo mm -hmm. I hate logos mm -hmm. on, on clothing on whatever because mm -hmm. you don't really need it I mean a lot of people look at this and say it's a bushron so they, 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 they made their point actually and the fact that you have the design plus this one is not the best example you can find but you can see everything is made by hand and the engravings are made by hand if you look with a loop you can find also the lines mm. used to write on a straight line plus all this design aspects is like closing the watch and it's like a 3k watch but with a beautiful movement i think it's a gg movement and Everything is, is special and to me it really goes towards a Cartier direction but in a much more stylish and niche way mm -hmm. and really is what we're saying, bang for the buck mm -hmm. at all. Where did you get it? 
Nice story, actually. Uh, you know, Parma, Mercante in Fiera, for us is the antique show in mm -hmm. Italy. Basically, it's a, super, it's a terrible place with a lot of crime happening, but we are all there because watches are there. Mm -hmm. and so a friend of mine got it, and I saw it on his wrist, and I was like, yeah, that's beautiful. And he showed me the opening, and I was like, I want to have it, and he was not about to sell it. So once he decided, he actually uh, called me. Is a huge guy from Rome I love. He's called Gabriele, maybe you've seen him on Instagram, mm -hmm. Barone, mm -hmm. but... And he just called me and like, oh, you know how, how much I paid? You remember? Yes, okay, it's yours for the same money. I just wanted you to have it. When you, to me, I didn't know what it was, but when you did that, when you took it off, I immediately knew it was a Bouchon. Of course. That is their quintessential the design. Yeah, 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 they're famous for this. This is one of the most difficult ones to <laughs> lock, actually. Wow. Yeah, it's really hard when you, like it's early in the morning or late at night, you just don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's what they're famous for. And I think the design has everything you need. The cabochon, the, look at how pointy the, 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 the sides of the watch are. Oh, it's just like, so elegant. It's so elegant. It's, it's, what, what's more to have, to be honest, literally. And I love the hands, the sort of, I, I don't know how to describe it because they're not baton, because they actually extend. Yeah, exactly. They, it's, almost it's, like like a ski. Yeah. it's almost like a yeah, ski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a... It's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. Really It's beautiful. It's also an odd watch somehow, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like Bouchon. I did... I, it's, it's part of myself to want something from a certain creator more than brand. Bouchon is more, it's like an artist to mm -hmm. me, more than a brand. Absolutely. And so I was like, I, I need a Bouchon, like I need a Piaget, like I need a Cartier. <laughs> and so this was the best I could find for, for, for reasonable money, and so it came. Do Bouchon look after clients? Have you, have you uh, taken this back to them or no? I really, I really doubt it. We try to get in touch with them, but there are a lot of brands that are like lost a bit. Mm. Show me is another mm -hmm. beautiful example. Mm. Yet, uh, no, they're not really going going after people. Because it would be they, amazing to be able to take this back and, and get some information. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm sure if anyone makes them, they would make them worse. Mm. Mm. Because now we look at margin. Yeah, yeah. They this, did this is the gold then. mirror. Yeah. Pardon the pun, this is the golden era. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, I love it, absolutely love it. And you know what, as Thank I say, the, the, the design is great, the yeah. story is great, but what's even better is that you're wearing it. And it's yeah. so, is, it's so you. you. Look, it's, it's so, so you. hard I think, though. I think, I think we can sometimes get wrapped up in, actually, actually in, in the world of social media at times by looking at others and saying, you know what, that works for, that, yeah. that's cool, that could be cool for me, but really, actually, if we're being honest, it's not It's not right for you. I don't think I could rock that personally, but for you, it's absolutely Why personal. not? I mean, you need it's, a different strap, for sure. Yeah, no, and I like the strap, I like the strap. It's just, uh, uh, size-wise for me, I think it's slightly too small for okay. me, but, yeah, but on relate. you, it's perfect. I think that's the point. I think we, we, we sometimes get wrapped up in... I'm very lucky for this. Yeah. Andrea, thank you so much for it. And, and, and please, guys, leave a comment below, you. as yeah. always. Let us know if you what like Rolex. What a Rolex. lovely mix. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what your thoughts are on Rolex, or three Rolexes, if those are the three you want. And what a lovely to watch collection. An Thank oddball you collection. Me, man. Great to see you. Was great. Thank you. See you again in Milano, hopefully. Absolutely. This time, huh? Absolutely. Come on. <laughs>